A lot of the modeling was showing that this was going into the western panel of Florida here at AccuWeather. We did not believe that. We issued our, uh, our IPATH uh, map uh, earlier than anybody. In fact, there's, we're the only ones known sources that I know of that still has, a, that has a, 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 an IPATH. We'll get to that in a second. Let's get your impressions of our tropical rainstorm right now, looking at it on the infrared satellite. Right, Bernie, that's right. Good morning. We issued that uh, first exclusively, that first uh, iPath, so that people can be better informed and stay safer. That's what we do here at AccuWeather. Share the information that we have in order to help you best prepare. And uh, we are concerned about uh, this situation on a couple of reasons. One is this is heading into a part of the Gulf of Mexico here over the next couple of days that's infamous for wind gra uh, storms rapidly intensifying. Uh, so we think we could be dealing with a, a stronger entity here as it heads into the Gulf of Mexico. And then down the road, Bernie, it looks like this is going to slow down and prolong impacts across yeah. the southeast. Let's talk about the uh, let's talk about the int intensification. You can see this map now. This map has not changed. We should this. <laughs> right. on, uh, you and I actually drew this map last week when we were going over this. We always knew that when it got into the Gulf of Mexico, everything is lined up for development. And historically, this is an area that storms tend to really intensify quickly. And part of the reason is the warm water temperatures, and they're even warmer than they normally are. They sure are. Look at that map, map. That is not only that is incredibly warm water, not only just right at the surface of the ocean, but also through yeah. a depth of the ocean. That's power. That's energy. That a developing tropical system, uh, tropical rainstorm depression, and eventually in a tropical storm can use in order to gain wind intensity quite rapidly. The problem is, Bernie, that part of the Gulf of Mexico is known for those storms yeah. intensifying quickly. That's why we're concerned about dealing with a tropical storm and perhaps even a hurricane as the storm approaches Florida. I want to show you this curtain wind shear, still a little wind shear, that dark purple shading that we're seeing right now. But here's the problem, less wind shear uh, in that area historically where we see storms go to town with the Delvin. Now, you and I were talking about this. I, you know, we're talking about the west coast of Florida, not the east coast of Florida. But historically, you know, when history tends to repeat itself, there's a couple of areas that are very prone to hurricane or, or name storm landfalls along the west coast of Florida. Yeah, that's right, especially that area, the Big Bend uh, portion yep. of, uh, of Florida, the, of, of the Florida coastline, and then also south of Tampa, yep. down toward Fort Myers and Naples. Those are the historically favored areas for landfalling storms. Doesn't mean that uh, storms can't make landfall elsewhere, but those are the areas that sometimes we hone in on because history tells us that's more common. It is very rare for a land landfalling storm to come into the Tampa area. Doesn't mean it can't happen, but you know what, John? History tends to repeat itself with these tropical systems. So, you know, uh, and, and you can see some of the footage that we have seen. I, I want to show you this, John. This is our eye path as we go forward here, John, because Listen, right now we're thinking near the Big Bend of Florida, but it is certainly possible that we be, could be looking at a landfalling storm south of Tampa toward the uh, Fort Myers, Sarasota area. That would, if that happens, that would be more likely uh, Sunday morning. If it's farther north, it's Sunday night. And that has ramifications for the intensity. It sure does, because the longer it's out over the Gulf of Mexico, that warm water in a favorable condition for further intensification, the more intense the storm can be. That's why we always tell, recommend people to not focus only on the center point of where the storm is tracking, but that window of movement, the edges there. So everyone along the west coast of Florida certainly needs to be aware uh, of potential landfall there. And there will be widespread impacts beyond just where the landfall occurs with the risk for damaging winds, flooding rainfall, four to eight inches of rain in many parts of uh, the western part of, of Florida. And there can be actually eight to 12 inches uh, in some areas as well. So that's going to be a major part of this storm. People need to prepare for power outages, the risk for flooding in these areas. And again, the storm can intensify further. And if that occurs, we're going to be dealing with greater impacts across Florida and also up into the Carolinas. Don't let your guard down there, Bernie, because the indications are that the storm's movement could slow right. into early next week, prolonging impacts. Let, let's really talk about this. We're going with an AccuWeather real impact scale of one, John. Let's talk about the decision to go in that direction. That's right. So that indicates, again, we're concerned about flooding concerns, wind damage, power outages, all a possibility. Though, Bernie, this could become an AccuWeather real impact scale two 
if yeah. we see the risk for further intensification or the sl storm slowing down even further up into the Carolinas where we have concerns about beach erosion, coastal flooding, and major flooding issues, especially if that storm slows way down as we cons are concerned it may. Impacts along the west coast of Florida, possible landfalls, Big Bend uh, of Florida, the Big Bite, or south of Tampa. Impacts, yep. though, across the entire west coast of Florida. And then also look out Carolina's Georgia coast with heavy rain next week. Sure is. Great resource, the AccuWeather app. You can see this all on interactive maps of free download. All right. AccuWeather Chief Meteorologist John Porter. John, thanks for joining us here today.